Hi, welcome to Paxton Gates insect spreading class. The topics we will be going over today are how to rehydrate an insect, the proper supplies you will need, pinning and spreading of course, and some display options for your specimen. This kit will be available online on our website which is paxtongate.com. It includes step-by-step -step pinning instructions, styrofoam spreading board, forceps, zappa gap glue, your insect of course, number two pins, parchment paper, and a set of number three pins. So before we jump right into pinning, you will need to rehydrate your insects. This means softening the bodies of them so they are flexible enough to be spread. What you will need is an airtight container, paper towels, isopropyl alcohol, hot water, and a styrofoam or sponge will work. You will want to fill the bottom with half of 70% isopropyl alcohol and half hot water. That mixture inside creates humidity, which then makes its way into the insect's appendages, making them flexible again. Once you have that set up, you will need to remove your insects from their envelopes and place them on top of your styrofoam, never submerged in the liquid. The isopropyl alcohol is actually helpful in the fact that it prevents any mold from occurring inside here. Once you have all of that going, you will need to leave your insects left alone for three to four days or up to a week, depending on the size of your insect. Now that your insects have been left alone in their container for up to three to four days, you're going to want to check on them by carefully picking them up and seeing if their legs and or wings are flexible. A good indication is that you won't feel any resistance from the wings or legs. So now that we've checked on our insects to see if they have been rehydrated enough, we can finally move on to pinning and spreading one. <coughs> Unlike beetles, butterflies and moths are much more fragile, especially their wing area. You will want to get a good grasp on your moth by holding it between your index finger and thumb, right where the middle body region is. That is known as the thorax. You will now take an anchor pin, which is a number three pin we have supplied in the kit, you're going to be inserting it straight through its back. Right in front where the wings meet. You're going to carefully place your moth into the groove of your star from spreading board and making sure its wings are leveled with the area on your board like so. Next, you'll be taking a piece of parchment paper, carefully wedging it between the wings, on leaving it on one side of your anchor pin and on the opposite side of your antenna. Holding it tight between your fingers for this next step, you will be pulling one side of the wing down and taking a number two pin placing it below the hind wing, also known as the bottom wing, and above the forewing, which is also known as the top wing. I'm going ahead and leaving it there, and moving on to the opposite side of the wing, another piece of parchment paper. Carefully pulling this side of the wing down, and using the same technique 
placing one number two pin below the hind wing and one above the forewing. Now it's okay if your moth looks a little uneven. We're going to be readjusting that as we go along. So for the next few steps, you'll be needing your forceps and we're going to be readjusting the wings now. You're going to be grabbing the top of the forewing and using a dragging motion, pulling it slightly upwards just to where you want it. I want them a little bit even, so I'm just going to slightly move them around. And taking another piece of parchment paper, securing that side of the wing down, just so it stays in place while I'm working on the other side. And using a dragging motion, because this side is has fallen down a lot, I'm going to be, again, pulling this wing slightly up more. And just securing it with an extra pin, maybe right here. And my bottom wing looks pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it alone but I'm seeing this top wing is still not to where I want it. So sometimes you will have to remove the pins. But again, getting right underneath that wing with your forceps, s grabbing it right at the top and just slowly pulling upward and replacing a pin in place. And I'm going to be securing the wings again with another piece of parchment paper. And this actually helps along the way so they stay flat while I'm pinning. A good trick to see if your insect is looking symmetrical is to use your forceps and place them where the wings meet and make sure it is aligned on your board. Mine is looking pretty good so I'm going to leave it at that. Now that I am happy with the results, we will have to leave it alone for up to five days in a cool, dry place without any exposure to sunlight. This is known as the drying period. After five days, your insect will have hardened back up and maintained its shape, meaning the wings will have dried flat. So you will go ahead and remove the pins and parchment paper along with it and your insect will be ready for display after that. Thanks for watching. You can find other instructional videos at paxting8.com.